Well, we are live at 11.05 and we're going to do some fiberglass today. We've got our stuff gelled for the day and uh, we're going to start chopping. Um, I was talking to another fiberglass guy just yesterday. He builds cars also and and we were just talking about customers and some of the customer knowledge about how it's made and he said, yeah, sometimes they'll say, can you pour me one up today? And we've had customers do that too, can we pour me up a body? There are products made that are poured and the resin cast type stuff. Fiberglass is not poured. Um, I like to do a tax stuff that you guys can do at home, but today this is probably not a home project, but at least give you an idea of what the product is and how it's made of, of what you get when you get a fiberglass body. I am BC. This is Spirit Cars. Josh, the voice of Spirit Cars, is behind the camera there. And we're just going to go ahead and show you how we build some of our stuff. This is Spirit Spirit stuff, so I think i uh, got my gloves on. And my wife, if I pull in the driveway and I have some fiberglass on me, she'll spot it before I even get out of the car. So I'll put my little uh, little bib on here. Let's start. Here's a mold right here. This is our 32 5 window. You can see it. Uh, it's actually a couple different colors. And there's a couple differences between the gel. There's a tooling gel and there's a sandable gel. This is a black tooling gel. We had some scratches and some chips in the mold. This is all mold repair. So we've mold repaired that and we've sanded it so when the body comes out, it's going to be slick. It's going to be the opposite shape of this. So it'll be slick on the outside. Um, right here, this has already been gelled. So it's still a little bit wet. It got gelled this morning. And it's uh, a 27. This is our 27 with no doors. So all this is a sandable gel that's been sprayed on first. The mold itself had been waxed. Um, we use a product called Green Wax on the edges so that it all comes off the edges real good. On a on a, on a body especially, it's not so much like a boat. We have reverse curves. So if this mold wasn't, this is probably about a six piece mold here, if it didn't unbolt around the car, it'd be stuck. We'd build a part and there'd be no way you can get it out. But this one here, we'll take this flange off first, we'll take the dash off. This car actually gets a body, so once the whole thing has been chopped here, I don't chop too far into that, I'll leave it just a little thin there. Then we go ahead and bolt the body onto it, and we can flip the entire thing over. The floor, you mean? Once the floor is bolted into it, yeah. the body's built, then we can chop down into this way. And we put it on a rotisserie just so it's easy. I can chop one side. Because if, if you're chopping above your head, I mean, it may not stick, and it may fall down on your head. So we chop to one side, let it kick, and then let it come around. Again, weather has a lot to do with stuff. Uh, Think of it like we're spraying molasses. Molasses on a cold day you don't come out of the, the jar very good, but on a hot day it comes out a lot thicker. So in that room there, we've got a heated room, so even in this winter when it's a little bit cooler in this room, it's a nice day today, probably in the 80 degrees. Um, we try to keep our resin at the same temperature all the time. I mean, it comes through and it goes through the hoses, but once it gets running, everything gets the same temperature. You hear a lot about chop. It's chopped or it's hand laid. Um, this is rolling here. These, this is the end of a pallet. This is a whole pallet of it. Once those two are gone, we'll open that pallet, and all of them are stringed together. So once one runs out, the next one goes. So the whole whole pallets, and we run two strands. You can run four strands. You can run run one strand. Well, what we do is we run two strands at a time. We'll come out and you kind of take a look at this. It's this is fiberglass. It's all stranded. And what it does, it goes into the gun. And I put this gun together already just a couple minutes ago. And one of the keys to chopping is make sure your equipment's working right before you even start. So um, I haven't done that. I just put it together so hopefully everything is working good. But if you can see the roller here, this is like a rubber, rubber type roller. And this is a wheel with a motor that spins it. And these are razor blades. And I can put a different, they got different wheels with 8, 12, 16. 
and that's the length of the chop. If you can see how long this is, if I put the chop in, the rolling, it's going in as a big strand, but you can see it comes out chopped. So that's how the process works. That's why it's called chop. And we're going to do, I'm going to do a, a, this is a 34 grill shell. It's already been gelled. It's already dry. The mold is under that. The gel that you are going to see is on the back side of the mold. Um, it re, it's a air inhibited product. And I probably don't need to get into all those technical aspects of it, but there's a chop. The resin that comes through is a polyester a polyester product, a polyester resin. It activates with the methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. You can see this is red. And what happens, it's going to go through the gun and the catalyst will come in and this is an external mixed gun. So the catalyst is going to spray outside the gun and the resin is going to come out and spray out the tip and there will be a fan and the catalyst will spray onto the fan. They have internal mixed guns where the, it goes through a screw and it comes out all mixed. Uh, this works better um, for our purposes. It's the guns we have. We have a half a dozen of these type of guns. So that's what we use. Uh, may get a little noisy. I don't think it'll be too bad. So turn the equipment on. This is I'm going to check my uh, pattern. If you can see in here, I hit it and the catalyst comes out first. I don't know if you've seen that mist. And I get resin and catalyst, and then I can pull it and I get chopped. So the chop comes down to it. It's a messy job. We try to be as clean as we can. I, I just spray into a cardboard and we change out our cardboard once in a while. But if you look at that, you can see a pink color. That's why we use the vanishing red dye. So I know if, if I use clear, which is what I use in the gel coat, um, you don't know if it's not getting catalyzed, and if it don't get catalyzed right, it will never dry. So I'm just I'm in the habit of always, if I ever spray it, there's catalyst and resin mixed on the tip. I don't want that um, to be kicking, and then I'll I just have problems with my gun. A clean gun is, is critical. That's about as dirty as I'm ever going to let a gun get. But you got to take it apart every night, put it in the solvent, and do it. I feel like a surgeon here now. This is my tools. This is the tools of my uh, my chopping thing here. So a roller, when you roll fiberglass, air is the enemy. The goal is I'm going to put all that chop on this, and I do not want to have any air when I'm done. I need to roll out all the air to make sure. And there's different curves. You can see this is pretty hard to get in here. And on a roll like this, you can't always get just a big, long, flat one in, so there's different different curves. So we've got a, a great big roller for, you know, a big flat floor. we got like a rounded roller here, so if you're in the corner, like on the back side of the sea bucket, if I'm in the in the little corners here that I can barely get to, i got a little roller, i got big rollers, i got all kinds of rollers. And uh, so for this job, I think I like this one. I'm probably going to like these rollers. Gotta have acetone in my acetone. So I keep my rollers in acetone. And there's a different chemical I keep them soaking in at night. So let me put these away real quick. Yes, we wear a respirator. Can't he can't talk while he's somebody asked if he had a respirator and I said, Yeah, we usually know wear it, but it's hard to talk with a respirator. Hard to talk, and I'm already pickled, so we're good to go. <laughs> so I keep them. I keep them wet. Acetone dries quick. I got my my got my rollers ready. You have about depending on the weather. You just don't. You can't dawdle. Once you start, I will have probably about uh, 12 to 15 minutes to get this done. Make sure everything's working right. My gun's working good. I got my catalyst good. I'm pretty happy. Not real happy about where this is. 
get everything all sweet situated. Again, it's a nasty job. We we've, we've got uh, we got tie back under this and just use the sawdust. So we continually rake that up, and at some point when it gets too dirty, we can pull the tie back up and put it back down on the concrete. So I'm going to chop. I'm going to try to follow a pattern. Um, a good fiberglass tarp has the most chop, most fiberglass you can put in it, and the least amount of resin. Now you have to have enough resin to bond all the fiberglass together, but resin is really brittle and it's not a not a structural component of a fiberglass part. Your fiberglass is what the strength is. Chopper has the right of way. So if you start, if you're new in this department and I'm chopping, I've got to follow my pattern. I'm looking at my part. If you're standing in my way, it's easy for the chopper to go over that. You will get chopped. So the fiberglass chopper guy has the right of way, and there is no no exception to that rule. So if you ever happen to be at Spirit and you see somebody chopping, we'd love to show you around. But if you get in the fiberglass department and get chopped, well, you've been warned. It's probably going to take about, I don't know, 10 minutes to get this done. And once I pulled the trigger, I started the clock. So since we're live, there's no editing, you are just going to have to watch me do this until I get it done. I try to get the biggest areas, get it all, get it soaking down. If you can, obviously there's a ton of air right there. I push it down, air's coming out. I don't know if you can see through that, but then at some point you can kind of see and I'm pushing air all the way out of it. This is our 34 grill shell. It's a unique design for us. I really like the 34 style. What we did, we took a 23, so the backside opening of this is the same as the 1923 grill shell. So you can put this 1934 style front end on a um, tea bucket. On a tea bucket. If you've got a tea bucket with a 23 grill shell on it and want a, a whole new look for that car, uh, you could pull your grill shell off and this should bolt right back onto it. Or if you're Starting out by designing your car, you can just go ahead and start with this. Um, I like it. Again, it's unique to us. Uh, some people like it, and some people don't because of because it is so unique and it's and it's not a T. It's not a 23 or any of, any of the T range. We went ahead and put a flange on ours. For the normal grill shelf, you can see this backwards would come straight down to where the grill itself or the uh, radiator itself folds in. The frame would be down here. So this comes up to the frame horn and on our car goes down around the frame horn, that three inch tube in the front. So it hides that bolt from the uh, from the radiator. Um, clean, poopy look. I mean there's a lot of ways to, to do it. There's I mean, that's what I like about tea buckets, um, all the cars, but tea buckets especially. There's so many ways you can do it, so many different looks you can get out of it. I mean, you can find an old tractor and use a grill shelf from an old tractor, and that's pretty cool. We've got a 32 grill shell that we've cut down. You can put a 32 grill shell on it. You can do the, the 23 grill shell. Or no grill shell. Or no grill shell. Well, that's true. Or a brass radiator. Or one of the, the polished aluminum one that looks good. I 
Now I've got basically a first coat on here. I've got it rolled in. You can see by the color I'm thicker and thinner in spots. So I can I can see that now, but I got a good first coat on here. What do you normally do? Three three coats? Four well, coats? Depend, depending on the depending on the car. It's not the amount of coats, it's the it's the thickness and the millage. Now if you can tell, for me to try to go ahead and get the sides up here as thick as it down here, it'd be very difficult. It, it'll just be falling over like you see it falling over here, or not enough. So what I do, I go ahead and hand lay now. So you're looking at fiberglass rolling. This is fiberglass mat. Yes, when we do a full, a, one of the bigger cars, we have two people, and sometimes three people rolling. This mat over here, you got it. This is fiberglass mat. It's what we call ounce and a half mat. If I cut a strip, around here you'll hear me say I want a hard edge and a soft edge. I'm calling this a hard edge. What I'll do is I'll take this. Put it on my edges. So when you're doing hand laying, what do you do? Um, what's the mixture? Like if somebody did, doesn't have a chopper gun, what uh, was it? A, a shot glass worth of? There's a uh, there's a video back on the page. If you go back, and we've got a they're not catalog, but if you start at the beginning of this first page, we've been doing this for about three weeks or so. We did a, a whole video on just hand laying. But basically, what you want is about an ounce and a half of catalyst. You want a percent, I'm sorry, you want a percent and a half of catalyst um, for the resin. You can go down to a per percent, you can go up to about 3%. And again, it's based on the weather. Um, a percent and a half, let's say 70 degrees, is going to give you about a 12 to 15 minute working time. Uh, if it's colder out, you can increase your percentage. And a percent, of a, a percent and a half to a quart is about three quarters of a shot glass. So if you'll use about three quarters of a shot glass, which is about 28 cc's, to one quart of material, that should catalyze fine for you and it'll work good. Now you can see this part is, is red. Now a part that's already kicked over here, this is green. So if I ever see a part starting to go green, I'm losing it. And you can't lose it. That's not a good thing. So what I've done, I've got this. Here in the in the soundtrack, there I was increasing it. It was getting higher speed and lower speed. I have the ability with the trigger to pull and control the amount of uh, chop that's coming out. So if I slow down the amount of chop that's coming out, I'm spraying a wetter mix. 
and I really need to get this wet up here so I, I was spraying that a little bit wetter and I think what we're going to do I have given you about all the information that I really can without making you watch me do this for the next five minutes so we're going to hit the yellow book and say goodbye for today so I can finish my part here because whoever gets this 34 grill show, I bet they want a quality part. So where are we at? Pass it on. Coffee break contemplation. Pass it on. Pass it on. We're going to grab one. Hot rod man. Okay. <laughs> the path of enlightenment does not walk itself. So today you were walking down the path of fiberglass. Um, so that will be my path for the next few hours. Thanks for being with us today. It might not have been helpful hints for at home, but it is what kind of the procedures of the parts you get. So uh, we will do a show on on how to do fiberglass yourself, mixing and handling and all that. I got a question. How long will that stay in the mold until you release it? Uh, I could pull it this afternoon. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to watch for it to start to turn green. As soon as it starts to turn green, I can take a razor blade and trim this out. If I miss, I mean, I'll have just a one or two minute time frame. If I miss that, I'll have to trim it all out with a saw, which is fine too. I don't want to pull it so soon that it's still green and not hard enough. And if I set it down wrong, it's going to take the, the shape of uh, just the way I set it down. Probably overnight. Heat has a big, a lot to do with it. This will create its own heat. On a hot day, it dries quicker. On a cool day, it dries slower. Uh, so this, at least here, this part will sit in the mold till tomorrow morning. First thing, we'll come in. We pull parts, we trim parts, we clean it up, we gel. Like I showed you, the, the 27, once everything's gelled in the morning, we're ready to go for the afternoon. We'll stop in the afternoon. And that'll be our day. Small parts like this one person can do. Some of the bigger parts, especially like the 32 that I showed you, or a Model A, or a 34, one of those. It's two people. We do a lot of hand lay first to get the hard areas and make sure we got it nice around the door jams. And then it's just two people that you just rock on it and you got to get it done. It's, uh, something like this isn't too bad, but when you got a big part you get started, I'll start in an area and make sure that's rolled and then I'll kind of overlap it a little bit, get that rolled and because you can't chop the entire car at one time. Uh, it would start kicking on you. Well, unless we've got any more questions. That's it. That's it. We will see you tomorrow at 11.05 and I'm, I may be driving a car tomorrow. I don't know. But we may be... i got a Model A sedan that we got fenders and everything on all lined up. We may talk about that or really the only way you're going to know what we're going to talk about is see us tomorrow at 11.05. So for now, have a good day.